It's election time at our school. Our student council has 16 members, and from these 16 members, they want to select a president, a vice president, and a secretary. So how many ways can this be done? Now we can approach this problem in the same way that we've done all our other counting problems before this. We're going to go back to the basic concept of choices and selections. So we can focus on the president first. Now, any one of the 16 members has a shot at becoming president. So there's 16 choices for the president. Now, once a student has been chosen president, they aren't allowed to be vice president or secretary because they've already taken the job of being president. This means there is one less choice for vice president. So there are 15 choices for vice president. And finally, from here, there would be one less option for secretary, so there are 14 choices for who becomes the secretary. So overall, there would be 16 times 15 times 14, which is 3,360 ways that we can choose a president, a vice president, and a secretary from 16 members. Now what we've just done here is we've started with 16 members and then we had to fill three positions. This situation that we have right here is called a permutation. Now a permutation occurs whenever we have to choose several items one at a time from a larger group of items. In this case, the items happen to be students. Now I hope this definition of a permutation sounds familiar because we've actually seen this before. Now you might be wondering, where exactly have we seen this before? Well, we actually saw this in our bookshelf example. Over there, we were selecting one book at a time. But there's a slight difference between the bookshelf example and this example right over here. In the bookshelf example, we were selecting one book at a time, and we actually used up all our books. That was an example of a factorial problem. We had n choices for the first book, n minus 1 choices for the next book, and it would go all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. So we used up all of our books. Meanwhile, a permutation is only going to use some of our choices. So a factorial uses up all of our choices, but a permutation only uses some. So an example of a permutation would be something like this. So this time, instead of going all the way down to 1, it starts with n, n minus 1, and stops at n minus 2. So in this example, n is 16, so the result is 16 times 15 times 14, and it just stops there. So once again, a permutation only uses up some of your choices, while a factorial uses all of your choices. So we can say that a factorial is a very special kind of permutation.
Now enough vocab, let's just get on to another permutation problem. This time, we're at the Olympics. It's the 100 meter sprint. And there are eight sprinters competing for gold, silver, and bronze medals. So how many ways can the medals be awarded? Now one point that I want to stress is that I want you to approach these problems by thinking about it. I don't want you to say, okay, so this is a permutation problem, so I do this. Because when you do that, there's an element of memorization involved. You're saying, okay, so because it's a permutation problem, that means that I have to do this. So let's try to not memorize things. Let's try to just understand what we're doing. So let's start with the gold medal. There are eight sprinters, and any one of them can finish first. After this first sprinter gets gold, there are only seven sprinters left fighting for silver. And once silver is claimed, there are six sprinters left who can get bronze. And we can stop here, because the other five sprinters are not going to get medals. So overall, there would be 8 times 7 times 6, which is 336 ways to award the three medals. Now this answer of 336 is correct when all sprinters are equally matched and they all have an equal chance at getting a medal. But if I told you that one of these sprinters just happened to be Usain Bolt, well then our answer would actually change. Now. We're actually going to solve this problem in another video, but I can tell you right now that the answer would be a lot less than 336 because this time Usain Bolt is racing, so he's pretty much guaranteed gold.